All right, what's up, guys? So I just wanted to inform you on my trades for the last three days. So as you can see here in my execution window, I have had uh, a lot of failed shorts in the last two days, three days, I should say. So yesterday I was trying to short MICT. Uh, I was trying to short it at 690. Uh, if you look here, I have the chart from yesterday. Um, so it was around it was around this area here where I was trying to short it either on this spike up or on this spike down I'm not a hundred percent sure Let's see what time it says there so it stamp was uh, so 1037 so 1037 I was trying to short it so okay I was back here in this area here 1037 so right here I was trying to short it at 690 it was in this I think this little uh, resistance spike here so I figured it would flush and uh, I probably would have gotten a scare here but then if I would have just kept holding for the rest of the day uh, I would have been pretty happy and you can see here at flush I just couldn't get a fill on my short there um, and it's the same strategy that I've been I always kind of talk about um, kind of the the failed VWAP so this is the VWAP rejection so you can see here in the earlier trading it was kind of it pushed above the VWAP and held and it started to push higher and then it hit this resistance towards nine dollars and just kind of started to fall down and once it kind of broke the VWAP here tried to retest and reclaim but couldn't in this area here I shorted it knowing that well anticipating that if it couldn't break the VWAP again it would be uh, a pretty good short and it would have been if I could have gotten a fill uh, I could have just held it basically the rest of the day and covered in anywhere near the five dollar range here or even at six dollars either way it would have been a pretty decent trade uh, anyway uh, as you can see it's still coming down today uh, and the day before that it was LODE so with LODE it was it was the same kind of uh, setup that I saw in MICT um, and this was back on Monday so as you see here back on the chart on Monday um, you can see that it constantly was holding above the VWAP for a large uh, a large point of the day and uh, I was thinking of going long right out of the gates I was looking at it as a potential long setup right here when it started to break the view up and held above it but you can see here it flushed down below and then it broke it again so this was kind of all over the place but for the most part it was it was pretty strong and holding above the view app I was looking to short it in these areas here so around the two dollar mark so 184 and 185 so like basically around uh, this area here I was looking to short it so when it came back up here I was going to short it and then sell into this flush um, I would have been able to get a decent 10-15% it would have been kind of following along with a different strategy not the rejection of VWAP strategy but this was kind of the over uh, the overstretched uh, strategy so this is kind of a strategy I've been thinking mm -hmm. about it's, it's kind of a tricky one because you almost have to judge the top of a uh, big mo momentum move to the long side but what I find is that almost every stock uh, kind of starts to drive itself up and will usually become extended above the VWAP. But then once it kind of starts to hit, get in touch with reality, um, it will start to fall back towards the VWAP. And that's exactly what happened today on AESE. And so, you know, when I was going to short this one, it was basically just a, a kind of thought process that it was overstretched and that at some point in the day it was going to drop down below those levels and as you see here towards towards kind of the close it ended up shooting down back down to 150 142 so if I would have just held that position at 184 down to the 140s it would have been a really nice short and that's kind of one of those things with uh, like I said these over stretched oversold or overbought kind of strategies where you're just looking to short something when it's kind of 50% above the view app or when it when it has like a you know a large uh, sh sh uh, difference between where the VWAP is and where the and where the stock is trading and that's what happened today with my uh, trade here on AESE now what happened with AESE was it was kind of you know trading uh, 
a little bit of weak right out of the gate, but it was one of the top leading gappers. It was up about 20% with a little bit of volume. So what happened was it ended up breaking the VWAP here, and I was kind of watching it, thinking uh, maybe going long on it, but I kind of missed the big move here. I was kind of just focused on some other things. Um, so this move I kind of missed, and after it made this big move, I started to look at it uh, from the perspective that it was over bought so it was starting to get too overstretched above the view app so it was up to almost 290 a level that was quite uh, overstretched uh, the view app at that time was like 210 before that it was at like two dollars 190 it was coming up but it was still so you know far removed from from the, where the view app was trading at that I just was looking at it like a short and when I saw these these kind of doji candles here you can see um, these pointed candles towards the top they're showing you resistance so just like this big wick here is showing you resistance towards the 290 level so it's shooting down it's kind of hitting resistance there at the 290 level and again you see this kind of wall of resistance here and here both at the 265 level and that's kind of where I was like you know what once it made this big fade up again and it couldn't continue with momentum I saw this volume spike here in the on the green candle thinking okay there's there's more volume coming into the long side but then it starts to die off and that's when you see this resistance and that's when you see the short sellers start to take over and that's what I was seeing not only on the time and sales over here as you can kind of see what's happening right now um, the, the shorts are in control there is a lot of uh, people trying to buy kind of uh, on a dip trade looking for this to bounce back above the VWAP and giving you some sort of long setup but for the most part the longs have been in control ever since this kind of area here it hit this resistance at 290 and it couldn't break those levels and then it was kind of so oversold at this point uh, or so to say overbought uh, overstretched from the VWAP that it's it was bound to fall so that's why I shorted it here at 265 and then I took my cover basically right into this flush it almost it happened almost right away and I just covered uh, at 235 so with a 15% gain uh, wasn't bad you know it was a decent uh, decent trade and this is the thing when you're dealing with small account is you you're not trying to trade a ton you're just trying to trade smart you're trying to find those kind of situations where you're like hey I can get in here at 265 have myself a stop at 285 which is 10% and you know if shit gets really bad and it hit, heads toward uh, the 290 level I can just get out anywhere at the 280s and just take a loss but at least I know where my level is and uh, the other the other thought process is that even if this does break above the 290 again it's probably not going to go much above three dollars because it's already up it was already up over almost a hundred percent on the day so you're thinking in about you know at eventually people are going to sell the all of the people that bought earlier in the day that were holding it for these these big moves you know the people that bought down here at 190 people that bought at you know 166 and they were holding it watching this big move maybe they looked away and came back and it's down to 250 or 230 and they're like oh shit I gotta get out so that's that's kinda why you wanna sell um, into these love at these levels and not necessarily um, be a buyer now a lot of times you know you see this this bounce off the VWAP here that's that's something that you can take advantage of if you wanna be a dip trader or like a VWAP trader but the thing to realize here is that there's not a lot of volume and once this kind of volume to the long side starts to fail and you see these these giant spikes of volume towards the, the red side you start to see that the bears are in control and you want to be very very skeptical you want to be very hesitant if you're a long bias trader and if you're a short bias trader well you just want to get a good entry price because this is probably going to sell off for the rest of the day and you can see that it already is. It broke the VWAP here. If I would have just held it here, you know, for this bounce, I could have, or I, or I could have, you know, gotten again here, and then just held for this drop. But either way, um, it's all like I said. It's all about kind of your strategy, what you're trying to do. I don't like to trade too much. I kind of take the trades that I see for a quick gain, and then I get out. Um, and I might have taken this trade here again once I saw this resistance starting to form. But y you don't have a ton of. Uh, there's not a ton of solid kind of evidence to show you that this isn't going to bounce back up and try to test this 265 level again right and then if, if you didn't sell here in this flush you would have kind of lost your whole your whole kind of gain there so that's why I like to 
uh, sell into these big uh, candles, whether they be long green candles or long red candles. I like to sell into those to know that I kind of maximized my uh, percentage and I'm looking for another trade. Now I'm not going to trade this one probably again because it already broke the VWAP without me. Sometimes, you know, if like I said, if it did bounce back up to this 265 level and then hit resistance again and came back down, I might have shorted it anywhere in there looking for it to break the VWAP and kind of held. But I don't have too much time to, to sit and watch it anymore because I got a few more things to do today. So I didn't want to focus too much on it. So with that said, um, those are my trades for the last couple of days. I hope you guys uh, like, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, these two strategies, the uh, kind of VWAP projection strategy and that I, that I was showing you on MICT and this kind of um, oversold or overbought, overstretched um, strategy where you're kind of trying to short it anywhere when it's overextended from the VWAP. Uh, these are strategies that you need to be very careful with. You know, obviously everything I say is just my opinion. Don't take it as advice for trading, but do your own research. Understand why st stocks do, do what they do, why charts move. Understand what the VWAP is meant for. Understand what the SMA is meant for, this red line here. Because, you know, one of the things that you could have done is if you were just completely f listening to your chart here, you'd see that, you know, the SME moving downwards, the VWAP starting to curl downwards, these are all signs of a very weak chart. So I should have probably been shorting it in this area when the SMA was starting to move lower. But as I said, you never really know what's going to happen. So taking your profits and walking away green is generally the best way unless, you know, the biggest thing is to know when to cut your losers and when to let your winners run. And that's one of those things where it takes time and it takes a lot of practice, but you need to let your winners run and cut your, sh your losers short, which is something that I struggle with. It's something that I probably, uh, I've lost more money um, shorting uh, because I don't follow my rules. So I make, you know, I make a lot of money shorting as well, but, but I've lost, I want to say like overall it's, pro you know, uh, I probably break even, but when I look at when I lose, they're usually bigger losses because I don't cut them short. Because I it, I think, oh, oh, if I just hold, it's going to go back. And sometimes it it definitely would have, but you don't know and you can't let something shoot up to 300% until you know 100% what's going to happen and, you know, don't want to have yourself in some, in some risk like that. But this is another thing that I wanted to talk about real quick is uh, BDR today. So BDR this morning was up over 300%. Um, it had shot up, you know, from basically like 60, 70 cents all the way to 335. It was up to 380 at one point, but it got halted. It got halted at 335 at uh, 958 today. And you can see here the time of sales. There has not been a trade on it since 958 when it was halted. And uh, yeah, people that bought this this morning are stuck. They are stuck in this trade and they are cursing until it, we, they're sitting there watching their computer, cursing their chart, hoping, praying for this thing to reopen because it could be halted, halted for a week. It could be halted for a month. It could be halted for an hour, for two hours. It could resume in five minutes. Who knows? And, you know, obviously it, those, that information will be available um, from the stock, like the NASDAQ or whatever uh, exchange is trading on. But still, it's it's one of those things where you need to be aware when you're day trading, you don't necessarily want to be holding a lot of these stocks for any significant period of time. You definitely don't want to be intraday trading them. You want to be day trading them, which means getting in, getting out, just like I did, um, just like I did on AESC. You don't want to be holding this thing for any longer than you need to, right? So because I was uh, just looking to catch 10, 15 percent, once my target was achieved, I got out. And you know, who knows? This thing could get halted right now to the downside. It could shoot down 10 percent, get halted at buck 80 or something, and be halted for two, three weeks. And then all your funds that you use to purchase um, that stock or that share or short the stock or go long, whatever you did, 
all that cash is held up until this stock resumes and who knows what it could resume at it could resume at 20 cents and you could have lost almost everything and that's the risk you take about you know trading in general but day trading specifically when you're dealing with these kind of subpar these cheaper stocks these kind of you know blonder tongue laboratories like these unknown names that really really just shoot up for a day uh, and then fade um, so unless there's some crazy catalyst behind these stocks you need to be extremely cautious with them and uh, this one today um, and see this is one of those things where you need this is why you need to be really careful right so the company basically admitted that they have no idea why their stock is trading the way it is why there's been so much volume and why it's trading at the levels that it has so saying that they reported results for the second quarter earlier in the month but there's really no news you know they obviously weren't significant earnings for them to be shooting up this level and uh, for them to get halted the way they have it's uh, yeah it's pretty scary but it's just a cautionary tale of what to look for and why uh, why we day trade and don't swing trade uh, these uh, garbage kind of subpar sub five dollar sub ten dollar stocks that are trading with uh, really low floats it's really just so we can catch the volatility so we can catch these momentum trades um, just like AESE today I wouldn't be holding this for a long time although this name does kind of intrigue me a little bit because it is in the esports realm it's still something I wouldn't necessarily be holding uh, for a long period of time off of a day like this right like because it's already overextended let's let it pull back if you want to buy this for a long trade wait for a dip wait for it to dip back down closer to the levels that it was at prior to you know this 52 percent jump even anywhere around the dollar fifty level dollar sixty probably be a decent buying area um, but anyway uh, always be careful and uh, learn your own strategy follow your strategy and uh, good luck with your trading have a good day guys